it's interesting. I, w- I, I was triggered watching, again, Lovecraft, Lovecraft Country on HBO, and I could go through a whole list of names uh, where I just there, there's, there's some police interactions uh, in this series, and it triggered me in a really uh, interesting way. You kind of already answered it, but if you could speak to it, why do you think a story like this is just so relevant, an Afrofuturism uh, history kind of story is so relevant right now in 2020? Because it, it throws us back to where we are now, and we where we are that, now, we we do not want to admit that we need each other, and we don't we don't do that until there's an absolute catastrophic bomb dropped on us where we we can't we we have to let go of the the things that we were raised with the 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 the, the, uh, the misinformation that is that is being dropped on all of us, you know that. Uh, uh, the massacre that happened in Tulsa. There was a young man I, I saw who was raised in Tulsa, and he was telling the story. He said that the, someone was saying about the massacre in Tulsa. He said, wait, 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 there wasn't no massacre in Tulsa. I'm from Tulsa. Was, they had so whitewashed the incident when in where he's from in Tulsa that he didn't know anything about it. People were mm. talking to him about it. And he Tulsa. was in, wow. in shock that I'm from Tulsa, and they didn't tell me about it. The teachers, nobody... My parents, nobody told me about it. So it is, it, it, it's harming all of us. You know, that we're, we're taking nothing away from our country's heroes. And we're, a, we're a, I always liken it to a country being a family. We're a family. Family got mess. All families have mess. Don't try to say that your family got no mess. Your family got mess. My family got mess. All families have mess. So you can... We we must look at and it's taken nothing away from how wonderful your family is and what you, what what the wonderful things that your family has done for you and because you're here. Mm-hmm. Um, but but we have to look at so that we can. I mean, George Washington, wonderful wonderful man. He set us up for our future, but he was a slaveholder. All the the slaveholders were just like people who had cell phone. Everybody got cell phone now. Everybody had slaves. Everybody there was so much money in it. So you can't talk about anything about that time period, and you can't look at it with 2020 vision. You got to look at it for the time period. Black folks had slaves, so we black we sold each other into slavery back in Africa. So it was a thing, but you can't not look at it. You can't say you can't whitewash. You got we have so much underneath the rug, and we've got to get the stuff out of the rug. So we look. The world is looking at us at these incidents and it's so clear that there there's something said to police to and it's not all police but but there they are there's something that they have in their mind and the, why shoot him seven times if you're going to shoot you you shot, you got the gun he don't got a gun you saw he may have been going around to get something so you shoot him in the leg and you 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 neutralize him grab him put him on the ground why do you have to empty your clip unless something is said that that's, that's the rule, that's the unspoken rule. And it's all those little things that if you know if it was a white person, there would be a discussion because that's your brother, that's your uncle, that's your dad. But when you see a black face and a white, we have to come together. We have to recognize we were raised differently. We see police differently. And well, let me ask understood. you though, Mister Vance. Let me ask you because mm-hmm. uh, in in the uh, in the show Lovecraft Country, uh, the characters, like so many of us, have a basic mistrust, right, of the people that they're coming into mm-hmm. contact with. So I hear you mm-hmm. about coming together, but how do you come together when people are outwardly lying, lying to your face, like some of the characters, right? Uh, I'm watching this RNC last night. I'm seeing constant lies. When I when you try to have a conversation with somebody, they're saying, "Oh, that really isn't an issue. Not that many black men are shot by police." So, how do you come together when people are dismissing your experience and just blatantly we're, lying to you? Right, right. We're in a we're in a time frame right now. We we were something happened about five years ago, uh, that, and I believe I, I thought it was it was it, there was a rash of shootings just like we're in the middle of it now but there was a uh, president obama uh this a black man was shot and president obama did what presidents are supposed to do come on the airwaves and say come on man come on y'all we can do better we can do better we can do this and he was he was doing what presidents are supposed to do 
And the very next day, there was a black man in, I don't know if you remember, in Dallas. He was uh, in yes, uh, I remember. An army garb. Yes. And he there shot was five police officers. Yes. After that, all bets were off. And, and, and we, we, they, we're in a place right now where we need someone in the position to begin to the process of bringing us back down so that we can, and it's a, it's a process of listening to people. I, I hear you. And maybe it's the first hundred days of Biden's uh, presidency that he, he, he has to go around and hear people. He, people feel that they're not heard. And, and during this last four years, nobody has been heard. Everybody has been, and there's nobody, there's no forum for people to go and have themselves heard. And people need to be heard. People are mad, and and it's and it, any any dis, any kind of disagreement, it it can blow up. And everybody's right, and everybody's wrong. There's we we've got to find a middle ground. But this, this violence is not the answer. It's not the answer. Mm-hmm. Martin Luther, Malcolm X even got to that place. It's not the answer. Mm-hmm. We've got to find a way to find the middle ground. We are this country wasn't founded. Everybody wasn't of one. We weren't at all a Christian country. We had to fight to come together. It was a fight. Mm-hmm. And it's yeah. going to be a fight. It's going to continue to, to be a fight because there's, there's money to be made. There's, there's power to be found in, in confusion. And that's where we are now. We're in confusion now. Mm-hmm. And in the confusion, people are making money and people are getting things done for themselves. But the majority mm-hmm. of Americans are suffering. We're suffering. And we need somebody to step into the breach and say, I hear you. Sit, let, let's talk. I understand. I'm listening to you. No, no, you can't get that gun. Put that gun. No, no. Put the gun down. Everybody, put the gun down. And use your... Mm-hmm. Find a way. We have to find a way to get to the middle and and, and, and get these folks out of the mix who want us to... To, to, to civil war. Right, get they them want out of the mix. Civil. Yeah. They, want, they, they, they have to get them because we need to get back to, what did you say? Uh, we are a democracy. Mm-hmm. That means things turn slowly into our country. You can't, it's not a, 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 a totalitarian. It's my, I say this is going to happen and it happens. It doesn't happen like that. You're not in this country. So you've got to understand that whatever, whatever disagreement you have, you're going to have to come to the table. Mm-hmm. and talk it through. That's how it happens in this country. You don't like it? Go to Russia. Go to some other country that... that, that but the, the greatest country in the world, which this is, things turn slowly here. And because it's well, that, kind of, that kind of country, it, so somebody can get in the mix and create havoc. And that's what he's doing right now, 45. Creating yes. havoc. Well, so before we you have go... To, yes. Before you go, I know you're on a tight schedule, but I have to ask you, you're an award-winning actor... Uh, on a scale of one to ten, how bad was the acting at the RNC last night? <laughs> what did you? <laughs> there was some acting going on, I Mr. Know. Vance. You... <laughs> I, I, I heard, but I, I, I refused to watch. And, <laughs> and the proof is going to be in the, the. But these days, you you have you can go to the videotape. You can go to what somebody said uh, six months ago, or back in January, February. We we know what was said, so I don't. Whatever he tries to whitewash about what was said, we all we you can look at the videotape and run it and see what what was really said. So, yes. I, you know, if if you're foolish enough to to uh, to not look back and see what he what was really said, then you can do that. You can that's a, that you just add that to the series of lies that have been told. So there's a big exactly. there's a big pile. Yes, 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 absolutely. Well, listen, uh, Lovecraft Country, it's on HBO Sundays, correct? Yes, Sundays. Yes, Sundays. Nine uh, o'clock, 10 o'clock. Yes. Nine, uh, and you know, I think it's 9 o'clock. It's, 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 edu- it's educational, but in a weird way, it's also escapism. Uh, like I said, Afrofuturism. Jonathan Majors, who I love, been on the show. Uh, Journey Smollett, of course, you yourself. Uh, Michael K. Williams. Uh, and all oh, the I'm brothers' name uh, escapes me. The guy who played Fitz in Scandal. I'm sorry. Um, 
he, he's in it. The guy who oh, played uh, Fitz. Anthony, Tony Goldwyn. Well, Tony Goldwyn. Yeah, there you go. There you go. So, yeah, all-star cast. Uh, I, rec- I, I advise folks to check it out. Courtney B. Vance, thank you again. Tell the queen, Miss Bassett, that we all love her, the queen. <laughs> I certainly shall. I all certainly right. Shall. Thank Have you. a great day.